Hey gardeners, today I want to review this book, The Well-Gardened Mind, The Restorative Power of Nature by Sue Stewart Smith, published by Scribner, copyright 2020. I want to start by saying that this book came to me at the most perfect time. I'm sure I'm not alone when I say that 2021 was difficult. I'll come back to my personal story of how this book helped save my sanity and kept me going after the formal part of the review. I discovered this book on Audible, so my first time reading it was actually listening, but I enjoyed it so much that I also bought a hardcover copy. Those of you who have followed me for a while probably already guessed this. I'm a bit of a science nerd. I obviously love botany, horticulture, and anything to do with plants. But I love learning about most fields of science, and brain science and psychology are no exception. This book discovers the psychological benefits of gardening, of being outside with nature, and of seeing the fruits of your labor. It is scientific in nature, but in a palatable way that isn't over anyone's head. It covers the history of agriculture, but also of the flower gardening that happened alongside the produce fields, explaining that our ancestors used plants for more than just food and medicine. One chapter is dedicated to how gardening is used to help rehabilitate prisoners, another on improving the lives of inner city kids, and many other chapters on the benefits of gardening. The last chapter sums everything up beautifully with a call to action to take what you now know and make the world a better place. The audiobook is read by the author, who has a soothing voice, beautiful accent, and intentional enunciation. She is the perfect reader for the type of book that this is, and I wouldn't want anyone else to read it. But her careful clarity and enunciation did slow down the speaking considerably, and I had to listen at a slightly faster speed. 1.20 times was perfect. I have no criticisms other than the slow pace, which, as I said, is easily rectified, and if you are reading a physical copy, it won't even be a thing. I truly enjoyed this book. I highly recommend it. My personal experience. Last spring, early summer, I was perusing new books to download and this one was on sale. It looked intriguing, so I thought, why not? I download way more books than I ever will listen to, just like I buy more books than I could ever hope to actually read. I'm sure I'm the only person in the world who does that. So I had no idea when or even if I would ever listen. But when I finished another book towards the end of June, the pressure of business, COVID, and life in general was starting to really weigh me down. The year started with so many blessings. My daughter Lily was back in school. I had hired a stellar crew to start the season, and we had new clients calling nearly every day. I had amassed a schedule of two to five consultations a week, extending six weeks out. I was blown away by how much my business was growing and thriving. But as the year went on, the classrooms in Lily's school were being shut down from COVID outbreaks and we decided to take her out for the summer. So now I was unable to work as much as I needed to in order to keep up. Many folks in my stellar new crew started to move on to other opportunities, which is normal. But what was not normal was that I couldn't replace them. The job market had taken its much needed turn in favor of employees and without a major restructure of pricing, I couldn't afford to pay what the market was now demanding. Changing prices is something I review over the winter, and I will be coming into this new year offering highly competitive wages, but it wasn't something I could change mid-season. So we were down to a skeleton crew of gardeners with an ever-growing queue of projects. Those consultations that had already waited six weeks to even meet with me were now looking at another six to eight weeks wait for us to even start the work. That's if everything went perfectly, which of course it didn't. I was burning out, and it wasn't even summer yet. A great friend of mine was preaching all of this self-care nonsense to me, trying to get me to add yoga and meditation to my already over full day. And while I enjoy those things, stopping work long enough to do them would add more stress than they took away. Maybe I wasn't doing it right, I don't know. It sounded great, but it wasn't helping. I started listening to this book about the time all of that was going on, and I'm so glad that out of my whole library, I chose this one. I listened to it over the summer while driving to consultations and working in my garden. This book renewed my spirit, love, and passion for gardening and my career in a way I couldn't have thought possible and didn't even know I needed. 
Like a suspension in time, the protected space of a garden allows our inner world and the outer world to coexist free from the pressures of everyday life. Gardens in this sense offer us an in-between space, which can be a meeting place for our innermost dream-infused selves and the real physical world. I realized that my self-care was, wait for it, gardening! <laughs> and I remembered that my yoga and meditation both happened while deadheading daylilies and pulling weeds. I started getting up about an hour before Lily each morning to enjoy a peaceful hour outside in my garden. That hour was bliss. I was able to calm my thoughts and relax my body while getting some fresh air and exercise. More than once as the year drug on, I questioned why I chose this silly business as a career. Gardening isn't supposed to be stressful, but business really can be. What had I gotten myself into? And more than once I recalled the lessons of this book. How gardening is so good for our soul and spirit, and whenever I could, I got back outside in a garden and found myself again. Renewal and regeneration come in so naturally in the plant world, but psychological repair does not come so naturally to us. Although the mind has an intrinsic drive toward growth and development, there are pitfalls in its workings. Many of our automatic responses in the face of trauma and loss, such as avoidance, numbness, isolation, and ruminating on negative thoughts actually work against the possibility of recovery. Sue Stewart Smith, I don't know if you will ever see this, but in case you do, I want to thank you so much for writing this book. It helped me get through this incredibly difficult year, and I'm so glad to have something so refreshing to turn to when life takes a stressful turn. And thank you for reading it and putting it on Audible, so I can listen to your wonderful book in your beautiful, soothing voice at all of the times when I just don't have time to sit down and read. Thanks so much for watching this book review, guys. If you want more content like this, remember to hit subscribe so you can see future videos. And if you enjoyed this, please remember to hit the thumbs up button below. Stay warm and safe this winter, and I will see you in the garden.